everybody, my name is Infinite Gamer, and welcome back to my Resident Evil 4 Crafting Only Challenge. This is part two to a two-part video series, so if you want to watch part one, go check the comments below to catch up. Other than that, let's do a quick refresher on the rules, just so everyone's caught up. Rule number one, all healing items and ammo must come from crafting items. Rule number two, my combat knife is not allowed. Since I can't craft with it, it will be discarded. Rule number three, kitchen knives and boot knives are allowed for crafting and parrying purposes. Rule number four, any guns I pick up or purchase with ammo already loaded into them are allowed. Rule number five, I'm allowing rocket launchers and the merchant. Although in hindsight, I didn't really need to use the rocket launchers with a strategy I find out later. Now that we've been reunited with Ashley, it's time to get that suppressant. On my way out of the door, Luis calls me letting me know that he got in some trouble. So he's not in the courtyard. Really, Luis? Well, this sucks. Actually, we need to keep moving. The courtyard is pretty difficult. It's full of zombie dogs. And there's also a section where Ashley is left alone for like a whole minute while baddies storm the courtyard. I tried to get through this area with only the bolt thrower, but it didn't really work. I ended up having to use a collage in my arsenal in order to get around this area and let down the three banners and open up the main gate. But this chapter has another difficult section to get past. Now that the gate is open, I can make my way into the grand hall. In order to move on, I need three heads. But before I can go looking for them, I decide it's time for some dinner. So Ashley and I sit down for some grub. Once we finish our meal, a cage opens up with a huge golden snake head. Well, if eating's all I gotta do for this head, grabbing the other should be a breeze. I head into the armory. I was hoping there'd be a bunch of guns in here, but no, it's just a bunch of old armor. Shortly after, I find another head. This one's a lion head, but once I grab it, knights from around the room start waking up and attacking me. I have two flash rounds already crafted for this fight in order to save ammo. I will try to knock the helmet off the knights, then once the parasite is exposed, I can throw a flashbang, killing all of them at once. I'm able to do this only twice, however, meaning this last set of knights are going to have to be taken down with my guns. Now that the knights went nighty night, Ashley helps me open the door and I continue to the red room. This room is so awful. What made this room suck so much is the bolt thrower. It just took forever to kill anything. And I had the red rope dude just constantly turning him into parasite. I managed to get by it, but it took way too long. I grab the goat head and move on. I put all the heads on the statue and suddenly a bunch of guys come through that locked door. One of them pulls a lever, putting me in a cage and separating me from Ashley. I tell Ashley to run while I start pulling off some real cool John Wick moves. Now we get to take control of Ashley, but since I already know how to speed through this section and there's no crafting needed here, I'm just gonna skip over it. Ashley manages to get me free from my cage, but she doesn't watch her back very well because Salazar's right hand literally came off and grabbed her. After Ashley got taken away, I get a call from Ada telling me that she spotted Salazar's right hand carrying her off to the throne room, meaning that's my next destination. But before I leave this area, I head into the library where Ashley was. Here I can find an assault rifle with 20 bullets loaded into it. This is going to help me out in just a second. I then stop by the merchant to trade some spinels for gunpowder. I also grab the striker shotgun. So now my ammo count is looking pretty good. Just before I leave, I see this little cutie held up in a cage. I let her out and brought her with me on the rest of my adventure. I just need a name for her. So uh, let me know a name for the kitty in the comments below. Now that I'm done with this area, it's time to deal with some bugs. There are too many Navista doors for me to kill all of them. So I'm just going to like run through this section and hope I don't die. I managed to do just that. And by that, I mean not die, thankfully. The only problem is they took all my healing items. Next up is the double Garador room. Since I have no healing items, this room quickly became my nightmare. What I decide to do is to get a bunch of enemies grouped up, and then I would wake up the Garador. I can then run to the very back of the room and ring the bell, making the Garadors plow through a group of baddies. Then once they stick their claws into the wall, I'll use up the rest of my riot gun's ammo and then switch to my striker shotgun to finish one of them off. That still won't be good enough, and that's where my assault rifle will come into play. I will use my assault rifle to finish up the armored Garador. With the two unicorn horns, I can unlock the door, and I find myself in the throne room. I see Ashley all tied up. I go to try to help her, but Salazar's darn hand stops me. That's when the guys around her start to pour some black liquid down her throat. Ew, you nasty-ass bastard! Salazar's right hand didn't like my language, so he threw me down a pit. 
Thankfully, I was able to stop myself before going splat. Now that I'm down in the sewer, I have to deal with more bugs. Once I get through them, I get to kick some rocks. My first step on my journey to punch boulders. I stop by the merchant again to trade for some more Smanels and the Matilda. Yeah, my ammo count's not looking the best since the double Garador room, so the vertical fight, I am not going to really fight him. My plan is to start the elevator and then just play ring around the rosy with all of the liquid nitrogen tank, slowing him down giving me more time. Actually this section wasn't that hard since I wasn't trying to fight him. I would just lure him into a tank and then turn it on and make him eat my dust. Once the elevator was on, I hopped in and got the hell out of the sewer. While in the elevator, I get another one of those weird dream thingies. I'm gonna have to talk to my therapist about this when I get back home. Once the elevator stops, the doors open and I'm greeted to find Luis with the suppressant. Finally, dude, you know how long I've been waiting? After taking the suppressant, Luis and I start to find a way out of the mine so I can get back to Ashley. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was the easiest chapter in the entire game so far. Since Luis can shoot people, I can just run around the excavation site, first turning on the bridge and then grabbing the TNT. I put the TNT in the boulder, and for the first time in the entire game, I get to do crimes. Luis and I find a minecart shortly after. So we took a quick thrill ride. Since this section gives me an infinite red nine, I'm just gonna assume the game crafted all of those bullets. So that means I can go through this section with ease. We end up crashing our ride into a Navistador nest. My bolt thrower can just mow through the Navistadors, so yeah, we just keep moving. We see an elevator and try to take a ride on it, but then the bridge from it breaks, so now we have to go all the way around. Ugh. Now that we made our way to the elevator, we can finally get out of here. I'm kind of done with elevators today. Luis shows me where the exit is, but then stops suddenly. You, you good, bro? Luis! Oh my god, he's been stabbed in the back and... No, I, I don't mean metaphorically, I, I mean literally. That's when Krauser falls from, I don't know, the rafters maybe, and tells me he's the one who stole Ashley. Krauser's the one who taught me all my crafting skills. Heck, this guy is so into crafting, he has a specialized knife for crafting. Originally, I was worried about this fight, but there's enough crafting knives laid out around the arena for me to use during this fight. So I managed to just hit button prompts and make it through without any trouble. Krauser jumps me and is about to put the crafting knife where the sun don't shine, but Luis is able to shoot out of his hand. Krauser decides that he's had enough and bails. Unfortunately for Luis, he's not making it out of this mine. Before he moves on, he gives me the key to his lab. According to him, there's a machine where we can remove the parasites, but I need Ashley first. So now is not the time to grieve. I gotta keep going. I get in an elevator, and as I'm going up, I get a call from Ada informing me that she saw Ashley at a clock tower. Once the elevator stops, I can get on a tram that takes me to a bottom of clock tower. Now, for anyone who has played the clock tower section, you will know this will be extremely difficult. I basically just try to speedrun the first section, running past enemies as fast as I can. Uh, it, it didn't go very well. I just kind of brute force it until I reach the lift. Once I make it to the lift, it becomes a whole new battle. I need to get through this entire section while using as little ammo as possible. How I ended up doing it was using my bolt thrower for anyone who was on the lift, handgun ammo for anyone on the ledges, and sniper rounds to take out the red guys. This strategy worked, but left me with very little ammo, so I'm gonna have to come up with something to defeat Salazar. I run over some boards and- oh. Oh no. Oh my god. Uh, well, I walk over some boards nice and slowly to meet up with the merchant. So my plan to defeat Salazar is... Okay, okay, this is the last time I used the rocket launcher. The rest of the game is rocket launcher free. Maybe in the future I'll come back to Salazar and Mendez and fight them with just my kit and no rocket launchers as a side video. But we'll see. Let me know if you'd want to see that in the comments below. I quickly find an elevator where I spot Krauser riding away with Ashley in a boat. Thankfully for me, he left behind a second boat for myself. Unfortunately for me, it has no key. That's when Ada walks into the room with the key to the boat. Ada drives me to the island where Ashley is located, and on the drive I ask her a very important question. Was any of it real? After she fell off the bridge back in Raccoon City, Marvin's decaying zombie corpse never stopped mocking me. I can still hear those words coming from the radio. You actually did? No, of course Ada doesn't answer the question and just grapples away, stranding me in a boat. 
Now that I'm on the island, I can take a look around on my binoculars. I see crows are carrying Ashley through these big double doors, but I also catch some spotlights in the way, so I'm gonna have to sneak very carefully through and... Oh, damn it. Aw, oh, shit. Never mind, we're doing the running now. I managed to get through the big doors with only 20 bullet holes through my chest. I would say that's pretty good. Since Leon hasn't reached his daily step goal yet, he has to continue doing the running through rocket launchers, tasers, and just a bunch of other things. Honestly, he ran so much he got lost and found himself in this weird corner where he heard a tiny meow. He opened up the treasure chest and found another lost kitty. Of course he takes it with him. He's not a monster. I find my way out and soon find myself in a facility with a locked door. So I start to take a look around for a way to unlock it when this guy walks out of the doorway. He isn't very smart since I tricked him into blowing himself up. Apparently, he was the guy guarding the controls to the locked door. It must not have anything important behind it if they have a dummy like this guy guarding it. I head back down and go through the door where I find Ashley! Either this cult just sucks at their job or they really don't want to take over the world. Unfortunately, the door to Ashley's cell is locked. Do they have like a rat guarding it? Like, come on. I get in an anime fight with this cow guy and then find myself in a dark laboratory. I picked up this key card, but it looks like it's too low of a clearance level for Ashley's door, so I'm gonna have to find a way to upgrade it. I go to leave and oh my god, what the hell is that thing? It, it's so floppy! Whatever it is, I just run past it into the next room. I turn on the key card upgrader and slot the key card inside to start the overriding process. But another one of those things drops from a body bank. I rush over to a valve and turn it so I can access this puzzle thing and unlock the door where I can find the biosensor. Wait, that's, that's not a biosensor. That's an MP5 machine gun. Whoop, I'm dead. The key card finished overriding and I grab it and bounce. I kind of get lost, but I found my way into this guy's mouth, so he takes a huge chunk out of my neck and leaves me dead. I try again to find out where the hell I'm going and finally figure it out. I end up in some kind of testing room with all of those things in test tubes. Hey, you could say that they're test tube freaks! No! God, please, no! Anyways, I see another keycard overrider in the back of the room. The only problem is some idiot put a panel over it and I didn't bring my toolkit. Thankfully for me, I finally see a biosensor scope right next to it. I look through it and find one of those dummies ate a wrench. I shoot him and take the wrench for myself. I can unscrew the overrider and turn it on. I slot the key card in it, getting clearance level 3. Now with it being a level 3, I can release Ashley from her cell. I rush back to unlock the door, but she's not looking too good, so I give her the suppressant. With some downtime, Leon decides to take a nap. Ashley finally wakes up from her nap. Now that she's up, we can start moving towards Louise's lab. Luckily for me, Ada calls in to tell me exactly where it is. Apparently, it's located at the cult's main sanctuary, which makes me feel great. First, we have to go through the dump yard, boiler room, and the sewer. While in the sewer, I get to meet a new version of our favorite floppy boy, the Regenerator. After killing him like I would normally do, he decided to channel his fursona and became a porcupine. The reason I bring this up is because I missed like four sniper shots on his second form, leaving me empty. And then I end up dying. So yeah, I don't want to have to deal with those guys again. After passing him, I make my way through the sewer and find myself at a wrecking ball. I can see a lift that will take me closer to the sanctuary, but it's behind a concrete wall. Thankfully for me, Ashley takes after Miley Cyrus and jumps into the wrecking ball cab and starts slamming it through the wall. This is going to take some time and with all the noise we are quickly surrounded. Thankfully I have a strategy to basically take out any threat here. Normal baddies are taken out with the bolt thrower, the gal guy can be taken out with the bolt thrower just in a different way. I will corral him towards a red barrel and then blow him up. I can do this multiple times until he dies. Then the crab spider parasites will come out and I'll just throw a flashbang at all of them. Once that's done, Ashley breaks the wall allowing us to move on. Ashley and I get to the lift. This is where she tells me that she wants to become a master crafter like myself. But I don't believe her father would allow that so I just kind of brush it off. Once at the top of the lift, we can get through these big doors that lead into a storage room. It's holding all kinds of weird rocks. Weirded out by this, I try to leave but then Sadler himself comes into the room. Hey, you're the guy from my weird dream! He's not happy with me killing all his minions, so he mind controls Ashley and tries to shoot me. She misses the first two shots, but then the last shot points right at me, but thankfully the gun jammed. Sadler is kind of disappointed that I didn't die and leaves with Ashley. 
I try to chase after him, but he's gone. I keep making my way to the sanctuary. First, I have to pass through some kind of camp where there is some evidence of Krauser being here. With Ashley gone again, I don't have time to linger on this. Next up, I find some kind of ruins. Here is where I greet Krauser once again. Not having a ton of ammo, I try to just use my knife against Krauser for the first section. When he runs away, I can set off all his traps from a safe distance. Once I make it through all of his traps, it's time for round two. I keep trying to use my knives against him, but that's no longer a feasible option since both of them broke. So now I have to switch to my shotgun and try to finish him off. So I switch to my shotgun and finish off his second stage. He decides to turn into what looks like a really messed up bird. He jumps and breaks the floor underneath me. I have to find my way through the bottom of the ruins until I make it to this giant pillar. And now it's time for Krauser Phase 3. I used 6 rounds of my magnum to deal damage, but it wasn't enough to kill him, meaning I switch to my shotgun and hope it's enough to take him out. And fortunately for me, it is. With Krauser defeated, I can take his knife and finish the job. Once Krauser is dead, I throw the knife away because I can't use that thing. It might be a crafting knife, but it's not a crafting knife, if you get what I'm trying to say. Now that I'm done dealing with Krauser, I can finally leave the ruins. But on my way out, I can spot some upcoming defensive barricades that I'm going to have to find my way through. I start to make my way to the first barricade, but I am quickly met with a rocket launcher. I have no idea what to do, but that's when the absolute Giga Chad Helicopter Mike shows up. Together, Mike and Ike can get through anything. He takes down the barricades for me, and I take down the giant guns for him. We can do anything. Wait, wh what are those? No, hey, get off that helicopter. No, 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 Mike! Gosh dang it, Sadler. Human lives don't compare to insect lives, you jerk. That's it. Sadler's done too much now. I'm ending this. I made it to the bottom of the sanctuary, where there are all of those body bags full of regenerators. But they actually won't wake up if you don't touch the bags they're in. So this section is actually super easy. I can get past the last few enemies pretty easily, and I finally make it to the sanctuary. I get inside where I find Ashley on a pedestal. I try to retrieve her, but Sadler decides that I'm not allowed to do that and uses his puppet powers to control me and tries to kill me but then ada shows up out of nowhere and saves my buns i grab ashley and get out of there i find a map that shows me where Luis's lab is so i start to head in that direction when more dreams try to stop me but i push through it and get into the lab i finally remove the parasite from ashley now one final time everyone Apparently saving the president's daughter from an alien parasite takes a lot out of somebody because Leon quickly passes out after that. I woke up. Apparently Ashley cured me while I was passed out. Now that we are both cured, we can make our escape. But first I have some unfinished business. I must avenge Mike. I find the merchant and sell all my guns so I can buy them back with interest. I pick up some new guns as well so my inventory is looking like this. Now that I'm all set up, it's time to kill Sadler for what he's done. I leave Ashley behind so she doesn't get hurt and take the final elevator. Sadler has Ada captured. I free her and both of us start attacking Sadler. He doesn't like this, however, and retaliates by changing into a big free. Since I don't have a lot of ammo, I need a good strategy to win this fight. And for those of you who don't know, this is my first time fighting this boss. In my first playthrough of the game, I just used a rocket launcher and killed him pretty easily. But since I have already cheesed two bosses with the rocket launcher, I want to fight Sadler for real in this playthrough. So, here's my strategy. I start by shooting Ashler's what did he say? eyes with the magnum. Once out of magnum bullets, I will switch to my machine gun slash shotguns to take out his eyes. I also make sure to get a stab in whenever Sadler gets staggered. Rinse and repeat until Sadler's phase two. When it comes to phase two, I just shoot everything I have left. Finally, Ada throws me the rocket launcher and I can end this fight once and for all. Take that, Sadler! This is for Mike! With him dead, I can finally leave. But not before Ada steals the parasite sample and escapes. Thankfully, she leaves behind a jet ski key, and Ashley and I can also escape. We get on the jet ski and finally end the challenge. Oh my god, this video was huge. Thank you everyone who decided to watch this second part of my crafting only challenge. I want to do more Resident Evil 4 challenges, but I kind of want to think of new interesting challenges that haven't been done before like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and helps me grow so I can do more crazy challenge videos like this one. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. You can't see it, but I'm waving on goodbye, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you guys.